Some actors are so legendary, they've been with us our entire lives. Most actors work their entire career without an iconic role or legacy to leave behind. Garrett Morris is not a part of that class. Whether he's Stan from Martin, Uncle Junior from The Jamie Foxx Show, a not ready for primetime player on SNL, Earl from Two Broke Girls, or any of his single guest appearances, Morris has had a small screen career that spanned across six decades. His snarky and sarcastic one-liners have kept us laughing the entire time, which is why Garrett Morris will always be unforgotten. Born in New Orleans to a 16-year-old daughter of a minister, Garrett Isaac Morris spent his childhood raised by his grandparents. According to the What The F podcast with Mark Maron, Morris said after he was born, his grandfather put his mother out of the house, but he did retain his relationship with his mother growing up. Morris's grandfather would sit a young Garrett on his lap to read the Bible in the hopes of not letting his grandson go down the same path of his mother. Being raised in a church-going family, Morris was a part of the Junior Gospel Choir as well as the City Choir. Having a background in music, Morris attended the Juilliard School of Music and moved to New York to pursue a career in show business. In New York, Morris would end up homeless and have nowhere to go, often finding himself sleeping on rooftops. Now, despite early struggles, Morris' tenacity shined through as he was eventually discovered at the age of 21 and began performing with the Belafonte Folk Singers, a group that Harry Belafonte managed but rarely performed with. While working with the group, Morris would also perform in off-Broadway plays. During his time, a friend of Morris informed him that a producer named Lauren Michaels was looking for a writer. In his conversation with Mark Marin, Morris said an idea he had for a sketch was stolen from him and written by someone else without giving Morris credit. Morris didn't name who stole his idea, but he did say the writer is now politically active. Looking at the list of writers for the first season of Saturday Night Live, former Senator Al Franken is the only member who has a background in politics and was active at the time of Garrett's interview. I was so pissed off that the one idea I got Instead of saying, I'll cooperate with you, because he had more juice about it, they could have done what they've always do, partner with somebody that's less experienced. To this day, that particular moment in his life was not one of his brightest moments. Nevertheless, a producer brought Morris into Lauren Michaels' office where they were watching Cooley High. Impressed by Morris's performance in the film, Lauren urged Morris to audition for an on-screen spot in the cast. The first season of Saturday Night Live won an Emmy Award for writing. Morris expressed his appointment that he did not win along with the rest of the writers for that season. In addition to his negative experience with SNL writers, Morris did feel isolated from the other cast members, although he did take partial blame. Morris did not go out to the bar, socialize, and network with his co-workers, which he feels prevented him from getting ahead in his career, comparing it to the golf course talk among white executives. When SNL debuted, Morris was 38 years old. The only other cast member in their 30s was Chevy Chase. The considerable age difference between Morris and the rest of the cast was probably another contributing factor to Morris not having any chemistry with his peers. Nevertheless, Morris spent five seasons on Saturday Night Live. He experienced a struggle that most black performers face on the show, being forced to participate in stereotypical sketches. Morris spoke on his time on SNL in a 2021 interview with The Hollywood Reporter. I was not an angel, okay? I used a lot of drugs then, so a whole lot of things I was doing you're not supposed to do. Lauren did have reason to fire me on more than one occasion. He never did. A couple times he verbally abused me, but look, when they told him to get rid of me, he didn't do that. He allowed me to audition for something else. It wasn't just writers who wanted me gone. It was some NBC executives too. Lauren didn't do that. Lauren Michaels left Saturday Night Live at the end of its fifth season due to burnout. He assumed the show would take a break along with him and return when he was ready to come back. However, Michaels would later find out that NBC had plans for the show to return with or without him. Someone else had been chosen as Michaels replacement as showrunner, leaving him out of a job and most of the cast and writers quit the show because of it. After SNL, Morris guest starred on sitcoms like Different Strokes, 227, and Married with Children. Morris also had a recurring character on five episodes of The Jeffersons in the mid-80s and 12 episodes of the sitcom Rock shortly after. In addition to sitcoms, Morris stretched his wings by also appearing in dramas like Murder, She Wrote, Hunter, and Hill Street Blues. In 1992, Morris was cast as Stan Winters in the Fox sitcom Martin. Stan was Martin's boss at radio station WZUP. 
in the first two seasons. When asked to describe his character, Stan, Moore said, slimy, jive-ass player, a small businessman who made it big, womanizer, and he had some kind of success on the business end. But on the other ends, he was obviously not hitting it out the park every time. In March 1994, as the second season of Martin was winding down, Morris was walking to his car in Los Angeles when he was approached by two men who demanded money. After Morris told them he had no money, one of them pulled out a gun and shot him in the chest and arm. The bullet passed through his arm and into his belly. According to Jet Magazine, a doctor of Daniel Freeman Memorial Hospital said that a bullet was lodged near his spinal cord. Once being listed in critical condition, after going through surgery, he had been upgraded to serious but stable condition. In an interview with Mark Marin on his What The F podcast, Morris revealed that he found out he was fired from Martin while he was in the hospital. Not only that, but Morris wasn't told directly that he would no longer be involved in the show. He found out that his character Stan was being written out of the show after reading a script. The producers from the show fired me for Martin. The thing that really fucks with me is that Martin went around the world onto talk shows telling people he went by my bed and cried for me. In fact, I was sitting on a bed after the second or third major operation and got a script saying about my part Stan. Stan sells the radio station and moves to China. Now tell me, Mark, does that mean I'm still in the fucking show? This guy had the nerve to do that and tell people he did the opposite. In a 2019 interview with Netflix's Strong Black Lead podcast, Morris drew up his own conclusion as to why Martin would fire him without talking to him first. I think maybe he misinterpreted what went on and drew a conclusion that it was about drugs or something. It was about me being assaulted and nearly killed by someone who tried to shoot me. Moore spent a total of 55 episodes on Martin between 1992 to 1995. His last appearance on the show was in the third season episode Cream, where Martin and Stan invest in a restaurant. Luckily for Morris, he wasn't out of a job for long. In 1995, he was hired as a part of the main cast of the sitcom Cleghorn. The series followed fellow SNL alumni Ellen Cleghorn as she got her own sitcom as a single mom in New York. Sherry Shepard was also in the cast, but the series was canceled by the WB Network after airing for just 12 episodes. A year after the cancellation of Cleghorn, Moore scored another role in the main cast of a sitcom. This one arguably being just as memorable as Stan on Martin. The Jamie Foxx show premiered on the WB Network in August of 1996. Morris found himself portraying Junior King, Jamie's uncle who ran a hotel in Los Angeles. The show is credited with reviving Morris's career after his 1994 shooting. Although he had several projects under his belt between his exit on Martin and his role in the Jamie Foxx show. The Jamie Foxx show will go on the last five seasons and aired 100 episodes ending in 2001. After that series ended, Morris' work did not appear to slow down. Over the years, he participated in both film and television, guest starring in episodes of The Hughleys, All of Us, Shameless, while having small roles in movies like How High, Who's Your Caddy, The Long Shots with Ice Cube and Kiki Palmer, and Ant-Man. In 2011, Morris would secure yet another main role on a network sitcom. Two Broke Girls. The show followed two young women who work as waitresses from different backgrounds, coming together to raise money for their own business. Morris played Earl Washington, a cashier who worked at the same place. Two Broke Girls lasted six seasons and over 130 episodes, making it the third sitcom Morris has been a part of that aired over 100 episodes. It's extremely rare for an actor to be cast in one successful sitcom but Morse was able to make an imprint on three separate occasions, not including his time on SNL. Two Broke Girls would get canceled by CBS in 2017, but Morse has continued to work nonetheless. In recent years, Morse has been in episodes of shows like Scandal, A Black Lady Sketch Show, and Family Reunion. He's also had a recurring spot on the family drama, This Is Us. Garrett Morse's impact on television isn't talked about enough. Between being the first black cast member on SNL, Martin, Jamie Foxx, and Two Broke Girls, Morris had been involved in over 20 seasons of comedy on TV, which puts him in a class of his own. Throughout his entire career, Morris' humor, class, sarcasm, roasting, silliness, and musical abilities have been on full display. After more than half a century in the business with no signs of slowing down, Garrett Morris will always remain unforgotten.